It was a nine-something, sir, but I don't know the other digits. Yeah. 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 The address, as I said, is really not important as long as you remember it happened here in Wichita, Sutton County. Yes, sir. All right, sir, let's turn to count eight. In count eight, it is claimed that on or about the 27th day of April 1985 to the 28th day of April 1985 in Sedgwick County, Kansas, it is claimed that you unlawfully killed a human being, Marine Hedge, maliciously, willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation by strangulation, inflicting injuries from which Marine Hedge did die on April 27, 1985. Can you tell me what occurred on that day? Well, actually, uh, kind of like the others, uh, she was chosen. Uh, I went through the different phases, uh, stocking phase, and since she lived down the street from me, I could watch the coming and going quite easily. Uh, on that particular day, I uh, had a, uh, a other commitment. I came back from that commitment, parked my car over at uh, Woodlawn and 21st Street uh, at Bowling Alley there at that time. Uh, before that, I dressed until I had some other clothes on, I changed clothes. I went to the Bowling Alley, uh, went in there, had a pretense of bowling, called a taxi, had a taxi take me out to Park City. Uh, I had my kit with me as a bowling bag. Right, that was Park City in Sedgwick County, yes, Kansas? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, you had the taxi take you to Park City. What happened then? Uh, there I asked, I, I uh, pretended that I was a little uh, drunk. I just took I just took some beer and forced it around my mouth, and the guy could probably smell the alcohol on me. I asked, told him to let me out so I could get some fresh air, and I walked from where the taxi let me off over to her house. All right, where does she live? Uh, 62, <laughs> 42. 54? 6254? 6254. North Independence. All right. When you walked over there, what happened next? Well, as before, I was going to have uh, sexual fantasy, so I brought my hit kit, uh, and uh, lo and behold, her car was there. I thought, gee, she's not supposed to be home. So I very carefully snuck into the house, kind of like a cat burglar, and after checking the house, she wasn't there. So about that time, the doors rattled, so I uh, went, went back to one of the bedrooms and hid back there in one of the bedrooms. Uh, she came in with a male visitor. They were there for maybe an hour or so. Uh, he left. I waited till wee hours in the morning uh, and then proceeded to uh, sneak into her bedroom and uh, flip the lights on what looked like, or I think the bathroom lights. I just I didn't want to flip her lights on, and, and she screamed, and I jumped on the bed and strangled her manually. All right. Now, were you wearing any kind of disguise or mask at this time? No, no. You indicated this woman lived down the street from you. Did she know you? Uh, casually, we'd uh, walk by and wave. Uh, she she liked to work in her yard as well as I liked to work. It's just a neighborly type thing. It wasn't anything personal. I mean, just a neighbor. All right. So she was in her bed when you turned on the lights in the bathroom? Yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, just to, so I could get some light in there. What did you do then? Oh, I manually strangled her when she started to scream. So you but, used your hands? Yes, sir. And you strangled her? Did she die? Yes. All right. What did you do then? Uh, after that, uh, since I was in the uh, sexual fantasy, I uh, went ahead and uh, stripped her and uh, probably went ahead and uh, I'm not sure if I tied her up at that point in time. But anyway, uh, she was nude and I put her on a blanket, uh, went through her purse, some personal items in the house. I figured out how I was going to get her out of there. Uh, eventually uh, moved her to the trunk of the car. <sighs> Took the car over to uh, Christ Lutheran Church. Uh, this is with the older church. And uh, I took some pictures of her. All right. You took some photographs of her. What kind of camera did you use? Uh, poor Lord. Did you keep those photographs? Yes. The police probably have them. All right, what happened there? Uh, that was it. I, that went, I took, uh, she went through, I tied it, she was already dead, so I took uh, pictures of her in different forms of bondage. And that's probably what got me in trouble was the bondage thing. So anyway, that's the, probably the, the main thing. But anyway, after that, I uh, moved her back out to the car, and then uh, we went east on 53rd. All right, 
about what occurred then. Sir? What happened then? Oh, uh, trying to find a place to hide her, hide the body. Did you find a place? Yes. Yes, I did. Where? Uh, couldn't tell you without looking at a map, but it was on 53rd, uh, Queen Greenwich, maybe. Maybe, what's, what's the other one, Queen Greenwich? Greenwich Rock. And Webb. Between, I think between Wed and Webb and Greenwich, I found a, a ditch, a low place on the north side of the road, and hit her there. Uh, you say you hit her there? Well, there were some, there were some trees, some brush, and I laid that over the top of her body. All right, so you removed the body from the car, put her in the ditch, and then laid some, some brush over the body. Yes, sir. All right. Sir, in count nine, it is claimed on or about the 16th day of September 1986, in Cedric County, Kansas, that you unlawfully killed a human being, Vicki Wegerly, maliciously, willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation by strangulation, inflicting injuries from which the said Vicki Wegerly did die on September 16, 1986. Can you tell me what you did here in Sedgwick County on that day that makes you believe you are guilty? Yes. Uh, again, Vicki was, regularly was another potential victim. I went through those different phases, uh, locked in on her, as I would call it, and uh, decided that I would try that date. I used a ruse as a uh, telephone repairman to get in their house. Uh, drove there in my own personal car uh, around lunchtime, during lunch hour, or approximately that time. It was earlier in the morning than that. And, uh, but my, I actually went somewhere else and changed uh, changed my clothes, what I, what I call my uh, hit clothes. And, hit uh, clothes? Hit clothes. Uh, basically different, you know, things that I'd need to get rid of later. Not, not the same kind of clothes that I had on. I, I don't know what other better word to use it, uh, crime clothes or hit clothes. I just call them hit clothes. Uh, anyway, I walked from my car as a telephone uh, repairman. As I walked there, I donned the telephone helmet. I had a briefcase. Went to one other address just to kind of size up the house. I'd walked by it a couple times, but I wanted to check it a little bit more. Uh, as I approached it, I could hear a piano sound. And uh, went to this other door, knocked on them, and told them I was, that we were recently working on telephone repairs in the area. And, uh, and went, to her, went to her and knocked on the door and asked her if I could come check her telephone lines inside. Did she allow you in? Yes, she did. What happened then? I uh, went over and uh, found out where the telephone was, uh, simulated that I was checking the uh, telephone. I had a make-believe instrument, and uh, after she was looking away, I, I drew a pistol at her and asked her if she'd go back to the bedroom with me. Was this the same 357 Magnum you used? No, this, this was a different one. Different pistol. Or you asked her to go back to the bedroom with you after drawing a pistol on her? Yes, sir. What happened then? Uh, I told her, we went back to the bedroom, I told her I was going to have to tie her up. Uh, she was very upset, and I think we I used some material that was in, uh, and that, that's another thing, I'm not sure, but I, I think I used the material that they had in their bedroom, and after I tied her hands, uh, she broke that and we started fighting, and we fought quite a bit, back and forth. All right, she was physically fighting you? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What happened then? I uh, finally got the hand on her and got a, uh, a nylon sock and started strangling her. Wrap the stocking around her neck. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Uh, I finally gained uh, gained on her and, and, and put her down, and I thought she was dead, but apparently she wasn't. But uh, after after she was down and not moving anymore, I, I rearranged her clothes a little bit and took some quick photos. I think three of them, if I remember. And then uh, after that, I there was a lot of commotion. Uh, she had mentioned something about her husband coming home, uh, so I got out of there pretty quick. The dogs were raising a lot of cane in the back. Uh, the doors and the windows were all open to the house. There was a lot of noise when we were fighting. So I left pretty quickly after that. Put everything in the briefcase and had her, I'd already gone through her uh, purse and got the keys to the car and used her car for my getaway car. All right, now you indicate that you thought that she was dead. Did you discover later that she was not dead? Yes, I guess the paramedics uh, arrived and they tried to attempt to re relieve her, or revive her, and that, that failed. I don't know if she died there or on the way to the hospital or at the hospital. I don't recollect. But you later found out that she did die as a result of your strangulation? Yes. Now, sir, let's turn to count 10. 